First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. Begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. You have an activated pipe in which that produced this black chemical called melanin. We, what we did was gave a hard line in the sand between the different definitions of esoteric study and exoteric study. Playtime is over. Peace and love, family. Peace and love to the human families all, all over the world. This is Brother Thought, uh, Professor Team with an L. Filling in for uh, Dr. Silver Aline Luther Park, Eel Bay for tonight. Uh, our topic is almost about the same as one l- last week. Uh, we're going to deal with the Michael Brown situation. But we all through history know about the Michael Browns, the Emmett Teals, the the uh, Everett Scotts, the the the, the, the you know uh, Trayvon Martins. So we gonna get into that topic tonight. A lot's been going on left for the past ten to eleven days here in the St. Louis, Missouri Republic. As a lot of you heard, uh, a lot of the riots been going on, looting, vandalism, and all this uh, negative and counterproductive activities that they're doing. Uh, I believe some of that, a lot of uh, plants that's inside the demonstrators as well to uh, to make the demonstrators look bad, as we know. Uh, some of them probably are uh, police officers themselves because that is known to happen during a lot of our demonstrations. So uh, I'm going to get into this and I'm going to get into why these things are happening to, to us as they've been happening to us for the last, I can say, maybe uh, 400 years, you can say, uh, since the European has placed his foot on our earthland here in the Americas. Because we are the originally indigenous uh, people of the earth, as well as here in the Americas. As those of you didn't know, we were here before the so called Indians that came here from uh, Mongolia to Alaska to Canada. 
we were here first because we were one to build the pyramids and the mounds. We were all the great mound builders. So let me read you something from what we call the divine warning by the prophet for the nations. The citizens of all free national governments, according to their national constitution, of all of one family, bearing one free national name, those who fail to recognize the free national name of their constitutional government are classed as undesirables. So I'm going to stop right here. Undesirables, classed as undesirables. That means that those who do not recognize the free national name of their constitutional government are classed as undesirables, meaning meaning uh, this. Uh, those of you that do not correct your names until until your more free national names, uh, 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 names of your ancient foremothers and forefathers, therefore they consider that uh, uh, you dishonoring your ancient foremothers and forefathers. Because you know the people of all of the nations honor their ancient foremothers and forefathers. They honor their culture. Uh, they know their culture. They know their history. They know their language. They have their own flag, their constitutions, and so forth. So they are recognized by the law of nations. I'm going to go on. And are subject to all inferior names and abuses and mistreatments that the citizens are cared to bestow upon them. I'm going to stop right here. Meaning, you could take the Michael Brown case. You could take the Emmett Till case. The Everett Scott case. The, 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 the uh, uh, Trayvon Martin case. And all of those, you know, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I have stated before, and I don't know a lot of you have heard it before, some of you haven't, that the reason, uh, the great part of the reason why this is happening to a lot of us because we are not in our proper person. We you know, keep calling, calling ourselves black, Negro, people of color, African Americans, and so forth, because those and those, all those are colorable labels. Those are not real people. They are color. People are not colors. So you are in a color. You said call yourself black or people of color. Then you're saying your uh, people are colors, crayons and crayolas. There is no such group of people on the planet Earth. So that, uh, therefore, that falls under artificial persons in law. Artificial persons. Therefore, what would an artificial person need with rights? What does an artificial person need with justice? What does an artificial person need with proper education? Would you try to uh, say if you have an artificial plant, would you put water into the artificial plant? <coughs> Excuse me. Of course not. This is the reason some of the reasons why a lot of these things are happening to our people. And it seems like it's irrelevant to have your name corrected and have a nationality and a birthright. All that seems irrelevant, but it's very irrelevant. Let me go on. And it is a sin for any group of people to violate the national constitutional laws of the free national government and cling to the names and the principles that delude to slavery. So you all know what that means. I just got to explain it to you. Uh, if you cling to the names like Jones, Johnson, uh, 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 Scott, you know, claiming to these European names, and you're not European. You know, all some of the African Moors are Aboriginal indigenous Asiatic people of the earth. Of the earth. We are the original inhabitants of the earth. Therefore, we must take our place among the affairs of men. So let me go on again with the, the next paragraph by Noble Drew Ali. I, the prophet, was prepared by the great God Allah to warn my people to repent from their sinful ways and go back to that state of mind of their forefathers. Meaning to that, go back to the state of mind of their forefathers, meaning that we go back to where they were in the original state 
an odd original state of mind, the original state of mind, because the type of mind state we have today is not of our own, and that has been created inside us. We are products of the Union States Corporation. Because those that are not, do not seek nationality or birthright are considered as corporations. Okay, go on. Divine and national principles that they will be law abiders and receive their divine right as citizens according to the free national constitution that was prepared for all free national beings. They are to they are to claim their own free national name and religion. There is but one issue for them to be recognized by this government and by the nations of the earth, and it becomes only through connection of the Moorish Divine National Movement, which is incorporated in this government and recognizable by all other nations of the world. That is true. I'll start right there. Because you take the uh, the United Washita D. de la Mundia, Moor Empire, which is we, the great mound builders. It, is, it has been declared by the United Nations by the oldest Aboriginal indigenous group of people on the earth. Our United Nations project number is 215-93. You can look it up. Don't take my word for it. You don't have to believe anything what I just told you. Just look it up. Do your own study and research and find out for yourself. I'm not here. I, I'm here tonight to not insult anyone or to hurt anyone's feelings or anything like that, but it's not about being uh, being emotional or about emotions. It's about truth, truth talking to save ourselves as a people and make a better future for our children, for their children, and for their, their children, for their grandchildren, and for their great-great-grandchildren. Let me go on. As I say again, they are to claim their own free national name and religion, but, but there is but one issue for them to be recognized by this government and by the nations of the earth. And it comes only through the connection of the most divine national movement, which is incorporated in this government and recognized by all other nations of the world. And through it, they and their children can receive their divine rights unmolested by other citizens, that they can cast a free national ballot at the polls under the free national constitution of the state's government and not under a granted privilege as has, has been existing condition for many generations. We'll stop right here. You see the uh, for the privileges, meaning uh, the privilege to drive. Free national people don't have a privilege to drive; they have a right to drive. To the right to a nationality, right to uh, 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 to a birthright. They have a right to their own laws, to their own laws. They have a right to assembly, which all deals with the Constitution, which I say again, I mentioned last week, uh, 36 Moors and 16 European uh, Masons, uh, Muslim sons, have signed, have signed the Declaration of Independence. A lot of people think that the Constitution comes from England. I hear to tell you that England doesn't even, they have a Constitution, but they don't have a written Constitution. They talk of having one, but they don't have a written constitution. If I haven't put that down or say that say, say anything about that last week or week before last, but I'm saying it this uh, saying it now, so in case I didn't forget to tell you. The constitution all is Moorish law. Does it have anything to do with the European? All based on the, uh, the law all law is based off of the zodiac. That's why you have twelve juries uh, 12 uh, people to a jury in a court of law, in a real court of law. So let me go on. And through it, it, it through 
of that thing. Uh, you who doubt, doubt whether I, the prophet, and my principles are right for the redemption of my people, go to those that know law in the city hall and among the officials in your government and ask them under an intelligent tone, and they will be glad to render you a favorable reply. For they are glad to see to see me bring you out of darkness into light. Darkness into light. We know darkness. Uh, those of us that study the mysteries and deal with metaphysics, we know that darkness means ignorance, means death. Without a substance without any light. Light means knowledge. Light means divinity. Truth. Righteousness. So let me go on. Doesn't make the man. It is a free national standards and power that makes a man and a nation. The wealth of all nations, national governments, gold and silver and commerce belong to the citizens alone. And without your national citizenship, by name and principles, by name and principles, by your free national name, what's it talking about? You have no true wealth, and I am hereby calling on all true citizens that stand for a national free government and the enforcement of the Constitution to help me in my great missionary work because I need all support from all true Americans, American citizens of the United States of America. Meaning true citizen of the United States of America. Well, what did he mean, true citizen of the United States of America? As I've already stated in the past lectures that I gave on the blog talk show, uh, most of you are not really U.S. citizens. U.S. citizen and American citizens are two different meanings, two different terms. In the U.S., your U.S. citizen means that you are an employee of the British Corporation, of the United States Corporation, which is a corporation. It is a corporate war nation state. If you want to be a citizen of America or a national citizen of the United States of America, yes, but not the U.S., not the U dot S. That is an abbreviation. That is a corporate war state, not of America. Let me go on to let's see here, next page. Okay. Help me to save my people who have fallen from the constitutional laws of government. Meaning that a lot of us by having have of not having a free national name or any nationhood or a birthright or anything or uh by claiming yourselves as a black African American people of color, uh Negro color, whatever. By claiming that you do not have a, the constitution, constitution do do not apply to you. Why? Because you live outside constitution, uh, outside of the constitution, and outside of constitutional law. And if you live outside of law, outside of law, then what are you called? You're called outlaws. And what do they do to outlaws? Anything they want to do to them, as has happened to the Emmett Teals, the Michael Browns, the Everett Scotts, and the Trayvon Martins. Okay, let me go on. I am depending on your support to give back to the constitutional fold again that they will learn to love instead of hate and will have the according of love, truth, peace, freedom, and just supporting the free national constitution of the United States of America. Okay, let me go on. I love my people, and I desire their unity and mine back to their own national and divine standard because day by day they have been violating the national and constitutional laws of their government by claiming names and principles that are unconstitutional. Let me stop again. Claiming names that are unconstitutional. Claiming names that are not of our ancient foremothers and forefathers. We dishonor our ancient foremothers and forefathers. 
We want to take on uh, the name and principles, even religious principles. How many of you know that you really cannot be Christians? Because Christians and Europeans are both synonymous. With you. you are not Europeans, so how can you be a Christian? You claim to the Jones, Johnson, Brown, Williams, whatever. Therefore, you are still their property of the Jones, Browns, and Williams slave estate. Anything you buy or sell is not your own. I don't care how long you work, I don't care how long you own this home, so called own the home. It does not belong to you. Then you buy doesn't belong to you, like a home or a car. Not even your own children. Starting with the birth certificate. Because the birth certificate is nothing but a bond set against you. It is a bond. Those of uh, of European living here in um, in the Americas, the same thing for them. When they start uh, uh, applying for birth certificates, that puts them on the 14th Amendment status. Let me go on. If Italians, Greeks, English, Chinese, Japanese, Turks, Arabians are forced to proclaim their free national names and religion before the constitutional government of the United States of America. It is no more than right that the law should be 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 enforced upon all other American citizens alike, and all other governments. When a man is born and raised there and asks for his national descent name, and if he fails to give it, he is misused, imprisoned, or exiled. This is what's been happening to us. This is exactly what's been happening to us. We have been using our decent name. We have we have failed to give it. He has misused and imprisoned us or exiled us. It says here, any group of people that fail to answer up to the constitutional standards of law by name and principles became because to be a citizen of any government, you must claim your national descent name. Because the names you're carrying now are not your national descent names. They are the names of your of your slave owners. That's their names. Therefore, you still claim to be their property. That's why you can never own anything. Not even your own children. When you when you get them a birth certificate on the uh, the first day of their birth, you have sealed their fate. Now they belong to the corporate war state. That's why they can come in at any time without even a a, 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 a court order and come into your home and take your children away from you if they feel that their property is being mistreated because it's theirs. It belonged to them, not you. Hard that to believe? Hard to believe? Check it out. Go to uh, uh to the uh, drlimelbay dot com. Read some of his literature. Go to RV Bay Publishers. Read some of their literature. Get books or dealing with more science. And it will explain to you what I'm talking about. It is up to you to learn. It's up to us to free ourselves. So it won't be no more Emmett Till's, Michael Brown's, Trayvon Martin's. Okay, let me go on. Let me read this over again. Any group of people that fail to answer up to the constitutional standards of law by name and principles, because to be a citizen of any government, you must claim your national descent name. Because 
they will place their trust upon issue and names formed by their forefathers. <coughs> the word Negro alludes to the Latin language, to the word nigger, the same as the as the word colored alludes to anything that is paint, painted, varnished, and dyed. And every nation must bear a national descent name of their forefathers, because honoring thy fathers and thy mothers, your days will be lifted up on this earth land. These names have never been recognized by any true American citizen of this day. Talking about talking about uh, your your slave names. Like I say, your property. Property cannot own property. Property cannot have rights. Property cannot get justice. You cannot give justice to a, a property. Let me go on. Though your free national name, you are known and recognized by all nations of the earth that are recognized by the sad national live. The 14th and 15th Amendments brought north and south in unit, placing the southerners who were at the time without power. That's right. They were without power because they lost their so-called sovereignty, which I'm talking about the European southerners as well, although they never had any sovereignty, sovereignty no way, not in the real sense because they are not aboriginally indigenous to this land. They were natural citizens, not national citizens. So therefore, they cannot be real sovereigns. They are not the sovereigns, never was. Okay, let me go on. At the time, 1865, free national constitutional law that was enforced since 1774 declared all men equal and free. And of all men are declared by the free national constitution to be free and equal since the constitution has never been changed. There is no need for the application of the 14th and 15th Amendments for the salvation of our people and citizens. Because all, uh, meaning, actually, in actuality, you only have really ten amendments. Anything after the tenth amendment is, is, vo- is void, is a fraud, is fraudulent. Yes, you have a Congress. You have a Congress. Yes, with the uh, House of the Senate and the House of Representatives, but it must uh, a constitutional convention must be held in order for them to convene, to create new amendments to the, to amend new, uh, 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 amendments to the Constitution. But that hasn't happened since, I believe, in 1789. Let me go on. If there isn't but one supreme issue for my people to use or to redeem that which was lost, and that is through the above statements, then the lion and the lamb can lie down together in yonder hills, and neither will be harmed because love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice will be reigning in this land. In those days, the United States will be one of the greatest civilized and prosperous governments of the world. But if the above principles are not carried out by the citizens and my people in this government, the worst is yet to come. Some of the worst has already came. Some of you have saw it on FEM, on CNN, I believe, that uh, uh, Michael Brown land in the middle of the streets, all shot up. Murdered by this European so-called police officer, which I already stated that he is, they are not police officers; they are uh, policy holders and policy enforcers. But nevertheless, murdered. They know he's a human being. He has two eyes and two ears and a mouth and a nose and a head. They know he's a human being. Seems like it shouldn't take that, but it does. Sadly to say, but that's what it does. 
it, it, it is a shame that it uh, it takes that for us to get up here and claim our free national names and our birthright, so could we be, be respected all over the world of all other nationalities of nations and, then, and of the human and be a part of the human family. Because calling yourself black, African American, people of color is not part of the, there's no such group of people part of the, of the human family. No such people. Therefore, you're artificial people. You're not real. And this how law looks at you. Let me go on. Because the great God of the universe is not pleased with the works that are being performed in North America by my people, and this great sin must be removed from the land to save it from the enormous earthquakes, diseases, ETC. And I, the prophet, do hereby believe that the administration of the government being more wisely prepared by more genuine citizens that believe in their free national constitutions and laws and through the help of such classes of citizens. I, the prophet, truly believe that my people will find the truth and the divine way of their forefathers and learn to stop serving carnal customs and merely ideals of men. They have never done them any good. They have always harmed them. That is true. That is true for a lot of the religious institutions, which has been reduced to mind-controlled institutions. Which is not of our own. We don't claim our own. We don't claim our own free national names. We don't claim our own religion. We don't claim our own spirituality. Uh, therefore, you, a lot of us have become slaves to someone else's spirituality as well. Let me go on again. So I, the prophet, am hereby calling aloud with a divine plan, but a divine plea to all true American citizens to help me to remove this great sin which has been committed and being practiced by my people in the United States of America because they know it is not the true and divine way and without understanding, they have fallen from the true light into utter darkness of sin, which is true sin, ignorance. Okay? And there is not a nation on earth today that will recognize them socially, religiously, politically, or economically, etc., in their present condition of their endeavorment, in which they themselves try to force upon a civilized world, now, let me stop here. What do you mean by forcing it upon a civilized world? A lot of you, uh, some of you know that, uh, uh, for those who don't know, that there's a reason why uh, Ahaz Malik Il Shabazz, better known as Malcolm X, and even today, Minister Louis Farrakhan tried to get recognized by the United Nations by calling themselves black, a black nation, or the nation of Islam. Islam is a religious creed, not a nationality, not a people. There's no such thing as, there's no such people as black people. They don't exist. They're not part of the human family. So therefore, they cannot be included into a nation of the United Nations. Now, the nations represents the civilized world. You cannot come to a civilized world and tell them and tell them and, and and ask them to accept you as a color. That's crayons or Crayolas. People exist. They cannot accept or include uh, uh, artificial people in the family among, among nations not going to happen. Let me go let me go on. 
they will not refrain from their sinful ways of action. And their deeds have brought, brought Jim Crowism, segregation, and everything that brings harm to human beings on earth. And they fought the Southerner for all these great misuses. But I have traveled in the South. I examined conditions there. And it is the works of my people continuously practicing the things that which dishonor, disgrace, and disrespect to any nation that lives the, the life. They're still doing it even to this day. Still doing it. You know, uh, uh, all these cultures that you're using, not of our own, uh, you name it. You name it. Dealing with religious as well. Religion is not notwithstanding. Here we go again. And I, I am hereby calling on all true American citizens for moral support and finance to help me in my great missionary work to bring my people out of darkness into marvelous light from the prophet. Okay. I hope many of you have understand what I'm talking about and where I'm coming from from, from reading those uh, statements to you. It's from the Moorish literature by Prophet Noble Drew Ali at, uh, uh, um, also known as Sheikh Sharif Abdul Ali. It was his free, it's his free national name. Okay, uh, a lot of us are uh, wondering why we cannot hardly get any justice. I just explained to you why we can't hardly get any justice. We keep on uh, carrying these names. You ask any child uh, in fourth to fifth grade, why is the name is Johnson or, or Brown or, or, or Lincoln? You know, they will tell, tell you, you know, uh, because of my uh, people. They were enslaved, part of our history, a later part of our history. It's not actually our history; that's the slave history. When you, even when you are uh, talking, you uh, studying black studies or dealing with black history, that's slave history. I don't deal with that. I deal with Moorish history. Our history go back hundreds, hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of years. Beyond, far beyond that. Because at one time we have enslaved the European. Oh, yes. A lot of Europeans were enslaved, especially among their women, were enslaved en masse across the globe. That's why you have uh, a lot of these, uh, have the, uh, the so called Indians of India, which are Hindus, Hindu, which is Hindustan, they are Hindustanis. Not Indians. Indians come from the word indigo, meaning a dark shade color. Because a lot of us were called Indians at one time here in the Americas. Because a lot of you don't know. But here in the Americas, we have uh, keep upon these practices on uh, uh, as an example. And I'm doing the demonstrations here in the St. Louis, Missouri Republic, looting, burning, robbing, stealing, murder, rape, you know, all these, the homosexuality, all of these things are outside of our culture. Outside of our culture. And still wondering why we were the most mistreated people on the planet. Okay, I'm going to go on to this uh, book called The Nigger Problem. Dealing with, uh, okay, here we go. This, This paragraph is called Planetary Social Disorder. The nigger problem is unique in that it is paradoxical. Intersocial anomaly or interfacings between Aboriginal and Indigenous natural peoples, which is us, that is us. Aboriginal and Indigenous natural people are us. But we are doing things that are unnatural. 
are natural to us as a people. Being homosexuals. Robbers, murderers, et cetera, et cetera. Let me go on. In a thoroughly moral body of politic of foreign European colonial descendants, featuring their miscreant activities, which have been misclassified as racism. Let me say this again. Featuring their miscreant activities, which have been misclassified as racism. How many of you know that racism is not really something but that was created by the Europeans? Something that's not even really real. It really is not about racism. It's about birthright and birthright theft. I explained to you earlier about the other nations of the world, why they don't recognize us. Because we don't recognize ourselves. If we don't recognize ourselves as a people, but then how or how in the, in the hell do you expect other people to recognize you as natural people? And we don't recognize ourselves as natural people. And we dishonor our ancient foremothers and forefathers because they honor their ancient foremothers and forefathers. They honor theirs. They honor who they are. They honor their history. Their culture. Do we do that? No. We take on the culture of others. And we are slaves to that culture. And a slave to their religion. And a slave to their spirituality. Let me go on. The truth about and the root of the nigger problem is genocidal, colonialism, birthright death. As I said before, this antisocial behavior negatively affects Aboriginal and Indigenous society, society as a whole, as us. The nigger problem as an issue affects Moors socially, politically, morally, ethically, economically, and spiritually. As I told you before, it manifests as injury, most specifically to the suppressed Asiatics of Northwest Mexico, that's us. We are the Asiatic people of, of, the, of the earth. Asiatic meaning earth-bound people. We are earth-bound people. Because at one time the earth, earth was called Asia. The whole, the whole earth was called Asia. Bear that in mind. Okay. To the suppressed Asiatics of Northwest Amexa, meaning North America. Amexa means North America who have been falsely branded as Negroes, Blacks, Colored, African Americans, Afro Americans, or West Indians, Niggers, etc. Okay, all those misnomers were coined by Europeans to describe a civilly lost and fallen people who are the descendants of a much greater culture having extraordinary standards of higher for higher knowledge. But those among us who think that we are really those coin names, challenge yourselves with some actual studies and research. Then ask yourselves how ridiculous we must have appeared to others from around the world and, and we do. We do. Ridiculous. We're being laughed at twenty four seven. So they know we we, we we have not yet know ourselves yet. All of us need to study ourselves. Study and study ourselves. And then we can know the world, then we can know God, which is uh, our higher self. Most of you that are uh, religions or in the Christian in the Christian religion or uh, 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 whatever, uh, 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 even even in Islam, for that matter. Those who call yourselves Jews, uh, which 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 are not all, all that wrong, because the original Jews are Moors. The original Jews are Moors. The Europeans that call themselves Jews, 
they are Europeans. They are Zionists. They took on the title, stole like a uh, that's part of the birthright death that we're dealing with today. And I'm going. Okay, our uh, 54, 54 nations in Africa. The ancient names for the continent which we call Africa today are Erkebalon, Tamari, and Kemet, and Kemet, or Kemet. Some writers spell Kamaat or Kemet. There are many national reports up in Africa. There are a number of approximately 54, which can be researched in any well stocked library or any world almanac. So there is no reason, there is no reasonable way that we as a people can possibly be African American, a nation of two continents at the same time a free national name and a national seal, a written constitution, and the governs and, and, and that governs such a claim. Well, what do we mean by that African American? Okay, African Americans are two are continents of nations. Two continents of nations. So what nationality are you? Africa has 54 countries. Each 54 countries have 100 different languages and dialects. Which one do you belong to? Which one is yours? In the American continent, you had a North America continent, Central America, and South America, and the adjoining islands. Are you United States and America or Brazil? Are uh, you United States American of uh, Chile, Mexico, Canada? Which one? Because this is an umbrella of nations. African American is not a nationality. As I say again, I'm going to read again here in this book. Uh, it's called, let me see. America is the name of one or two of the world's seven recognized continents. America also includes an estimate located in the equator, equatorial area of the Western Hemisphere and includes a multitude of adjoining islands. The American continents and islands cover a geographic area that spans latitudinally from the north northern hemisphere of the planet down to the southern hemisphere of the planet. Do not be confused with an alleged intentional America country as propagated by literary adulterers and reconstructors of history and geography. Told you before, but I, did, I just read it to you just now. They are not countries. They are continents of the seven continents of the planet Earth. Okay. We have established the fact that Africa is a continent and not a nation, and that there are many nation republics on the continent. So thereafter, examine, show, and prove how and in what way, socially, politically, and jurisdictionally, and the like. It doesn't. Those are different jurisdictions. You cannot do the same thing in uh, Colombia that you can do here in, San, in the St. Louis, Missouri Republic. You cannot do, uh, uh, you cannot, I mean, uh, dealing with sovereignty. Can you be a sovereign? We can, because because we are uh, the Aboriginal indigenous people of the earth. Can an Englishman go to Mexico and be a sovereign there? No, he cannot. Can a Russian go to Brazil and be sovereign there? No, he cannot. So let me go on. See, logically, anyone who seeks to try to defend such a weak social and political position cannot be and will not be taken seriously by anyone of another nation 
for they will know that such a person has a title of, or no knowledge of government or geography and lack an elementary school level consciousness of civics. Yet we and we and the African nations are related people. Very true. Black is a brand and a lose to servitude when misapplied to persons as an identity. It is a degrading means civilly death and describe one who was without, without light. Light is the instance means knowledge. For when an Italian was born in any part of America, he would still be Italian, though some may call their, that person Italian-American. But some Italians, I'm elaborate on that, but some Italians don't even like to call him white. You would probably get in a fight with one if you call them white. Why? Because they know is a label. They know that is a status. They know that's not an identity of a people. That doesn't identify who they are by definition. Let me go on. If a Japanese was born in some part of America, he will still be Japanese just as his father's. Yet he may be called Japanese American, etc. You may have been born in America. America is a continent of the North and, and the continent of the South, plus islands. So what is your nationality? What American nation are you referring to? You would have to have a nationality and thus a pedigree, identity to prove connections with the country claim, such as Nigerian African, Nigerian American, Nigerian Asian, etc., so that is the name of the na nation in Africa from which you came. Does your identification card or documents back up what you say or what, what, or, or what someone else has said? How can, can you identify yourself with the families of nations? And my answer, you can't. Because you have no nationhood. You have no constitution. Therefore, you are nationless. We are nationless, nationless people, people without a nation, without a nationality, without a birthright. Therefore, you don't belong anywhere. Now I'm going to read you this paragraph called Race Misconsciousness. Okay. Many people of the human race in these days have limited consciousness, consciousness as to what legal implications or displaced word can cause. The Inquisition has really proven profitable for the Roman Catholic colonists in the occupying the Americas. The negating spirits generated by misplacing the words nigger, negro, black, coon, shy, jigaboo, nigger, my nigger, etc. does foul things to race of people. It rapes them of their dignity and legal status in society. Have you ever thought about, about why every 10 or 15 years the European colonists and politicians who occupy seats of government in North America habitually change the identity of a people using anthropoid, anthropoid names and then call them a part of the human race? Did you ever consider them deviant, legal, surety motives? Consider your household. Your, you associate yourself with where you live or where you were born and with family members and friends. Any of them, if you can take a look at their state, issue birth certificates, carefully examine those, these vital documents through color and then ask yourself, how could such a multiple of contradictions possibly be valid? Every 15 years, you... you Okay, you was a Negro, then you were colored, then you were black. Now you are African American. Some pay, even people, some people even say people of color. These are not true identities of any real people. Uh, you see a person throw a baby doll down, you know that's an artificial 
or a mannequin down. You know that's an artificial a dummy. That's artificial. Throw it down on the ground. You wouldn't say, ooh, look what he did to that man or that woman or that child. You wouldn't say that because you know they're not real. So they have no need for rights, do they? They have no need for justice, do they? They're just another mannequin, dummy, or doll. The same falls on the artificial persons. Okay. Okay. Have you ever thought of why? Every, okay, let me go again. Here I go again. Have you ever thought about why every 10 to 15 years the European colonists and politicians who occupy seats of government in North America habitually change the identity of a people using the anthropoid names and call them a part of the human race? Do you ever consider their deviant legal surety motives? Consider, like I said, consider your household. You associate yourself with the with where you live and ask where you born with the family members and friends. Ask any of them if you can take a look at their their state issued birth certificates. Carefully examine these vital documents through color and then ask ask yourself how could could such a multiple of contradictions possibly be valid? I had to read that to to you to you again so it can sink into your mind. Okay, all right. One or more persons may be the offspring of the same mother and father. Sometimes they may be a different father, but the same mother. This birth relationship can also occur vice versa. You may note that on one state issue birth certificate, according to the era of time, the European administrators may have written the word Negroid or Negro on another colored or another black, on another African-American, etc. But this has the label brand name they had uh, uh, put on our people through the years. One decade, you're a Negro or a Negroid. One decade, another decade later, you're a colored. Another decade after that, you are black. And another decade after that, you are an African-American. Says here, there is no way in truth that these corporate construct, constructed instruments have any true bearings and proof of identity according to the rules and governed evidence, genetic lineage, or in grammar. You would have to be of the genetic seed from which you came. This you are today who your forefathers were, and without doubt or contradictions. That is very true. When you talk about the corporate states, well, that's all states are. Whether you live in the Missouri or you live in uh, Illinois, New York State, California, Texas, Louisiana, whatever, they're all corporate states because they are all corporations. And when you all have birth certificates of of of, of your children, they belong to the corporate state. That's why I said earlier, that's why they can come to your home and take their property. Because when you sign a birth certificate or on any of these uh, mothers, when you put your name on those birth certificates, you're letting them know that you have a product for them. Now they are their property. They go through the birth certificate. Soon before your uh, your child feet hit the floor, they prints are all on, all, uh, already on the certificate. They go to the uh, Bureau of Vital Statistics. Then they go Human Resources, the Department of Human Resources, to the Recorder of Records and Deeds, and to the uh, Department of Bureau of Commerce. All the way to the Secretary of State and to the Federal Reserve System. Now they are obligated to the debt or to the so called national debt. Okay, let me go on. Have you ever questioned why these social and political distortions do not plague or happen to other sovereign people 
or to any other nation of people. Let us take these words as you read through the nigger problem and examine them. Be prepared to adjust your preconceived notions about race and nationhood. Think, consider for one moment what you may not pay too close attention to. Okay? Let me read this. The unalienable rights. As some people say, unalienable, unalienable rights. Actually, it should be unalienable rights, meaning you cannot be leaned upon. Okay? If you are a free national being, or a uh, 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 free national being with a birthright. Okay? Unalienable rights are those rights which arise at natural birth and are not to be separated from anyone. Such rights are divine and have no origin from government. One must understand this principle if one is to understand birth rights. You were born just as others with unalienable rights. These human rights by their nature and existence are not legislated and cannot be transferred from one person to another. Every natural person, which is us, and this is what you should be, you are the natural person, not artificial persons. It says that every natural, every natural person, okay, with these rights, a name, a nationality, birth rights, religion are all included. It is a long, it is, it is long past time for all Asiatics of North America to start exercising their unalienable rights, which is all of us. We have been exercising our unalienable rights for years, for years. Maybe uh, Michael Brown wouldn't have, a lot of these things wouldn't be happening, let alone Michael Brown, long before Michael, this Michael Brown incident. A lot of these wouldn't be happening to us. Because we'd be recognized by the all nations of the civilized world. Let me go on. If you are one who has not done so, then stand up, be active, and take your place in society and be responsible in the affairs of, of, of men. Have pride in your name, in your nationality and race. That's what we have to do, people. This is what we have to do. Some of you uh, uh, probably feel this uh, or say that, oh, this is the first time I ever heard anything like this. You know, I never heard of this before. Those who are are listening to the blog show show tonight, well, you're hearing it now. And I hope that you understand what I'm saying for the sake of our people and for the future for our children and their children and their grandchildren and for their great-grandchildren. Okay, let me go on. This knowledge and information is presented for the purpose of correcting misconcepts in history, anthropology, sociology, etc., and to neutralize that stagnating ignorance that causes terse inter-social confusion. We seek to raise the standards of, of knowledge and education and, and to enhance the quality of life for humanity at large. <coughs> this knowledge is not to be used for perpetrating superiority of race issues, as been the popular practice under DEMO instructions. Uh, meaning that DEMO instructions meaning democracy, what they call so-called democracy, which means majority rule. It means rule of the demon. It doesn't have, it doesn't have anything to do, to do with being free or freedom or any of that mess. Because the democracy, uh, democratic government uh, system is what they had set up, which have overthrown the republican system. But which is uh, a republic is meaning a, 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 a country or a nation ruled by law. All the demos mean something that's ruled by a majority. As a though they haven't heard this before, I can tell you a difference between a democratic 
rule structure of government and a Republican rule structure of government. And I'll repeat it again. I'll give you an example. Say, for instance, that a man has stolen a piece of, piece of bread or a loaf of bread out of the store. And the only two sheriffs in town to protect this man. But this mob, they have formed a mob to hang this man. The two sheriffs cannot protect the man because they would be overpowered, of course. Naturally, they will be overpowered. If I'm right, Am I right or am I wrong? They overpowered the, sheriff, the two sheriffs and lynched this man and hanged him. The tragedy as that is, okay, but the two sheriffs represent the Republican form of government. The mob represents a democracy. But the majority rule. So you have a democracy. Still, this is for those who haven't heard me uh, mention this before in any of the lectures that I gave on the blog talk show. I hope you take that to heart what I just said. Okay. This knowledge is not to be used for perpetrating superiority of race and issues as been the popular practice under demo instructions. Neither is the knowledge to be used for meanness. Truth, however, needs no apology. The lies and the oppression that falsehood promotes has been a great horror and shame against humanity. And it has because we're not saying that, say for instance, like everybody become national and have a birthright and all of this. This is not to mean that we will consider ourselves superior to any other race or group of people. We are all part of the human family. Now, this is not to say that uh, a, a Caucasian or European come to you and say something high or hello, and for you to say, get away from me, get away from me, you beast, you devil. No, that's not what I'm talking about. We are just as uh, sociable and, and, and civilly uh, 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 and friendly to uh, those Europeans who are friendly to us, that is, to them as we are to Asiatics that are friendly to us. Okay, let me go on. Use whatever frustrations you may have experienced in the past as fuel to expose the truth to someone who may be contaminated with ignorance, counter the commonly suffered and falsely instigated low self-esteem issues suffered by some Asiatics who have accepted these misconceptions and tags for themselves. And a lot of them have because they have not did any studying on any moral science or any metaphysics or uh, dealing with uh, the esoteric sciences of our science, which is moral science. We have not did that. We have not studied ourselves uh, our history, our real history, true history of the Moors, not the so-called black or slave history, the real history. Like I said, we need to study ourselves. And uh, therefore, we have, uh, then, then we start, start on, uh, on solving this problem, solving this thing. Because it's not going to go away if we don't do something about it. It's not going to go away if we don't seek our nationality and birthright and take our place among men and be part of the human family, then a lot of these things will go away. Not saying all of it are going to go away. Of course, you're going to have some things. You're going to have, still have some fools out here, but they can be dealt with easily, very easily, if we do what we are supposed to do. Okay, let me go on. This calls this one is called misinformation and male diction. Okay, misinformation and male diction are basic injurious injurious social engineering tools, which are institute, instituted for inquisition mission oriented outcomes and rooted in the history and propagation of what can be correctly called niggerdom. 
None of this is coincidental and none of this is circumstantial to innocence or to miscalculation. The socially dynamic reverberations of demonic misrepresentation mis- rep- rep- uh, mis- rep- uh, rep- was and is designed for social, political, and economic conquest. Do not succumb to nativity by assuming that those in power are without culpability in the abuses made against truth, history, birthrights, and honor. Most of those who occupy the religious and political seats of government are well aware of the great maldiction and misinformation farce that they have perpetrated against Aboriginal peoples and against humanity at large. Yes, they do. That's why it frightens them so uh, bad. It really frightens them to us to really speak about nationality and birthright. For instance, you ever notice that all these <clears throat> demonstrations, do you, you ever notice nationality and birthright is never discussed? <coughs> Excuse me. Even by our most religious leaders, our most civil rights leaders, they never, never expound on them. You ever wonder why? I know I do. You never hear people like the Reverend Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson. Why, hell, even Mr. Louis Farrakhan. They never speak on nationality and birthright. Never. Which is the issue? Is the number one biggest issue amongst our people. Why don't they do that? During the Michael Brown system, Michael Brown has been, since his death, it's going on the 11th or 12th day of the demonstrations. No one's ever brought up nationality and birthright. Never brought up the issue. I shouldn't have to tell you, but it's obvious to me that a lot of our, well, I can say, I put it this way, our religious and our political misleaders, they have been compromised. Okay. Now, there's another paragraph here. This short treatise on the nigger problem is shared with those of Asia, of the Asiatic nation, family of the extreme and farthest Northwest territories, especially those that have, that have been negatively sub- subjugated by mental servitude and artificial imposed illiteracy. <coughs> the Inquisition or colonists have successfully made many of our nat- natural people information blind and rendered them as self knowledge mutes meaning they have, uh, have kept on and kept on to the years and years and years of dumbing us, dumbing us down and keeping us dumbed down. Okay, let me go on. There are, however, available remedies for replacing some of the missing or removed vital keys or points of reference. These references keys were deliberately and systematically removed from the pages of literature and grammification. By the Inquisitionists, European demos, the Inquisition, since the Romans, popes, had declared the Inquisition against the Moors in Spain, starting in Spain, when the Moors fell in Spain in 1492, because of, of the Spanish language that they speak today is nothing but Moorish Latin. During the Roman uh, the first part of the Roman Inquisition, they have uh, renamed the Moorish Latin to Spanish. Now all the, everybody speaks Spanish in the Spanish-speaking countries and named the Moors Christians or Moriscos, as, you, as they want to call them. And this is part of what we are going through t- today 
as part of the Roman Inquisition. Until we fix this problem, this stuff will keep going on amongst our people. Let me go on. The Inquisition colonists have successfully made many of our natural people information blind and rendered them as self-knowledge mutes, okay? There are, however, available remedies for replacing some of this missing or removed vital keys or points of reference. These reference keys were deliberately and systematically removed from the pages of literature and gramification by the Inquisitionist European demos. These methods of pseudo-religious warfare are supported by their helpers, minions, and overseers. Much of the state of, of affairs, color, caste system, and infecting North American society has spread abroad and was achieved by the occupational Europeans' institutionalized psychic attacks and excursions in wars. Whereas truth needs no apology, we present some basic truths about the Negro, nigger, period. Go on. <clears throat> Intellect is the power or faculty of the mind by which one who knows or understands a distinguished form that which one feels or that which one wills. It is the understanding, the faculty of thinking, the capacity for thinking and acquiring knowledge. Knowledge, <clears throat> Intelligence is that qualified and capacity for learning, for reasoning, for understanding, and for similar forms of mental activities and, re and relationships, for grasping truths, facts, and meanings, etc., Take this into consider consideration, which viewing the nigger problem and all of its anthropological uh, aspects. Intelligent people do not run from nor seek to hide from words that the ignorant masses may assume to be insulting or mentally stagnating. They research them. For instance, the word nigger, nig negro and nigger synonymous constitute a most blatant example of such a misunderstood word, which has raised so many eyebrows and caused others to resort to anger or to dismay. Truth be told is that the extreme level of ignorance surrounding the word nigger is astounding and inexcusable. Instead of running and complaining, the wiser among us will choose to apply the science which Treats of the truth, the origin, the origin and morphology of words, seeking to know by way of foundation or fundamental grammification their etymons. More often, that assume many meanings and properly perceive origins of words are not true to the misconceptions heaped upon them by fad, by silent or war strategies, by deliberate corruption or of linguistics and education by inaccurate connotations or by ignorance. Okay. Move on here. Okay, let me, now. Says there time, amalgamation, and memory. Okay. Time is a limited or measured stretch or space of continued existence, which we as humans view as the interv interval between two successive, successive events, acts or periods through which an action or state or a condition continues. We measure these per periods by counting and measure degrees, the rotation of the earth and its orbit around the sun. Okay. Know that advanced sciences are not new in the Earth planet. Complex science and disciplines are far from ancient, far more ancient than what has been revealed to the masses. And it has, you know, uh, the 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 Earth uh, travels around the sun, you can say, twelve times, the twelve uh, constellations of the stars, the twelve zodiacs. A law is based off of. That's why I say again, as I said earlier, uh, that's why you have, have 12 people to a jury in a courtroom, in a, court, in a real court of law, that is. 12. 12 makes a dozen. 
the twelve tribe in the Bible of of, of Israel and, and so forth. Okay, let me move on. <clears throat> Know that advanced sciences are not new on the Earth planet, on the, on, the, on the Earth planet, sorry. Complex sciences and disciplines are far more ancient than has been revealed to the masses. Knowledge of real planetary history has been hidden and suppressed by the edicts and bulls of the Romans and the Church by way of their inquisition against the Moors and, and, and uh, veiled under the religious and culture war which the Pope of Rome named the Spanish Inquisition. Also in world history, slavery, ignorance, religious confusion, and world wars have very much to do with the base mission of the Spanish Inquisition. Policies initiated to Pope Innocent and expanded upon, uh, upon by Philippe II and others who primal to the world's intersocial problems of today particularly those social economic problems plaguing the branded natural people of the Western Hemisphere, which is us, our people. This is why we're going through what we're going through today, dealing with the Spanish Inquisition by Pope Philip II, because he declared a papal bull upon the Moors in 1492 during the fall of the Moors' ring and rulership of Spain. And it's been, and it been going on ever since, to this very day. Which is why, this is the reason why these things are happening, and ha and has happened to Michael Brown, to Emmett Tills, to Trayvon Martins. Let me go on. <clears throat> A major aspect of Inquisition strategy was to destroy or hide true culture and to burn ancient books and scripts that reveal the advanced civilizations disrupted or destroyed by them. Another aspect of the Inquisition strategy was to steal legacies of inventions, technologies, and religion, etc. This is the basis for which the Paleo-Europeans have falsely perpetrated their vague uh, elbow superiority claims related to the natural peoples of the planet. Man operates and builds on memory. A portrayed state of ignorance hovers over the masses of the world's inhabitants like a dark cloud. This is not this is not accidental, nor it is an act of nature. The calculated literary blindness or dead culture ignorance, especially in North America, is a direct and designed inquisition initiated effect. Mass world ignorance, literacy caused by a Christian dome. Then it really is, <clears throat> you know, uh, caused by Christian doll. They have uh, a lot of these Europeans have came to commit, <clears throat> and th they use a lot of the Moors and comedic sciences and bastardize them into the, what they call Christian doll. No, there's no such religion. It is a fraudulent religion. Ah, oh, boy, that is spread a lot of fire there. Hmm. There is no such religion. Same thing as your names. Names that don't belong to you. Religions that don't belong to you. Culture that doesn't belong to you. The spirituality that doesn't belong to you. But you are slaves slave to all, all these I mentioned. You are slaves to them. That's why we are the most disrespected people on the planet Earth. Let me go on. Okay. Natural people of the Western Hemisphere, a major aspect of the Inquisition strategy was to destroy and hide the true culture and burn the ancient books, as I, as I, I read it already. This is this is the, the uh, main okay. Man operates and builds on memory. A the tree state of ignorance holds over the mass of the world's inhabitants uh, like a darkness, like a dark cloud. This is not accidental, nor it is an act of nature. The calculated, literally blindness or dead culture, ignorance, especially in North America, is a direct 
and design inquisition initiated effect mass world ignorance illiteracy caused by Christendom inquisition policy has set the world back from potential progress and it has in a time measure that spans over 500 years many of the scientific works arts and advances of the ancient ones was put to the to, to the flame by Romans the truth was put to flame by the Romans the truth the truth about ourselves okay let me go on other key scientists, philosophers, prophets, master teachers, pedagogues, healers, astrologers, linguists, and managers, chieftains, masters, seconds, etc., were put to death, tortured, forced into Christendom, imprisoned, banished, and the like. This is why the Aboriginal Asiatics of the Northwest Territories are now ignorant or are, are vague about the true Moabite Moorish pedigree and their chronology nationality, and birthrights. The Spanish Inquisition was a monster of Christian war strategy. Now the demons rule the world with a fist of iron problem. And they have been ruling for the last 500 years, but their time is over because it's all based on the zodiac sign of Pisces. But now the Pisces age is over. This is the beginning of the Aquarian age, the age of truth. The only problem is, although the time of the European rulership being over, the only problem is we are not ready. And us being not ready is what's holding everything up. Even people across the world of other nations are waiting on us to get back full of government, to go back to the state of mind to our ancient foremothers and forefathers. That's what they were waiting on. But one day they're going to get tired of waiting. They can't wait so much longer. They, can, they cannot hold on much longer. It has to come to a time we are going to have to study, study, study ourselves so we can get back into the state of mind of our ancient foremothers and forefathers so we can be recognized into the human family and be a part of the human family as we are supposed to be. Let me go on. Okay, let's get to amalgamation. Amalgamation is the action of combining into a uniform whole two different compounds, elements, or species, etc. The ancient Abrita experiments were in fact ovum, zygote, and plant. Amalgamation exercises in genetic engineering. The two incongruent subjects of the Abrita experiments were the human species of Homo aboriginal oriental. The Trilodite nigger, anthro, anthropotagus, monkey, eight, metrically amalgamated, A and B equals C. The C, the Trilodite nigger, paleolithic man, hybrid, occidental, ruddy, pale, humanoids. Talking about the European. This is not, uh, uh, <clears throat> if I may expand on this, this is not a hatred of Europeans. This is not anything biased against them or anything. This, uh, this is the truth what I'm speaking. Not to put anyone down or to say that we are better than them or anything like that. I'm not trying to say that. I'm just giving you a true science, and that's it. If you don't want to believe that, it's not for you to believe. Tell you what you believe Oh, what's happened to, uh, to, to, to Michael Brown this this recent, last week, or a couple of weeks ago? You can believe that. Okay, let me go on. Okay, the experimentally created manifest or kind of man is is what has done, what has what has <clears throat> what has since been called. Mankind exposed to man. The genesis of a new kind of man appeared on the planet. 
And this is the scientific truth about the genetic creation of modern man, the Occidental Roman. Okay, the Roman's uncaring sense of earth culture is less appreciating and contemporary in character and nature. The Oriental Halic or holistic nature of seeing life is infused within the philosophies of the Asiatic nation. This distinction this distinguishes distinguishes the religious philosophies between Orientals and Occidentals, and is professed for the purpose of bringing some remedy to this social misunderstanding and abnormality. Therefore, the ancient Moabites introduced religion philosophy among the Roman humanoid nations. <clears throat> but as be, uh, uh, as I told uh, before and stated in this book, you know what they have done with it. They have bastardized a lot of this uh, sciences and spiritual practices. As I said before, I said again, now they have reduced it to a mind control system for their own agenda. Okay, let me go on. These socially reintroduced crossbred humanoids were derived from the Abrita experiments, which, tech, which technology was ex, uh, executed in, in Maiku and Patagonia, southwest of Mexico. Africa. The products of these experiments were referred to in the past as circulates, pale, pale face, paleo, or referred to as rude manners, Roman, red man, or for more contemporary times, Europeans. <coughs> because, at, because at one time, the Europeans once were called red men before they were called white men. For those who didn't know, but they were called red men or rude men. Okay. Now you now they are Europeans. Here we have the original man. The original man, Canaanites, Moabites, etc., are the Aboriginal dark olive peoples of the planet Earth, characterized by hair like lamb's wool and, and burnished copper dark olive complexion. They are the founders of civilization. Scientists created from their own human gene pool and from the the gene pool of anthropoid. <clears throat> Monkeys as a new heterogeneous humanoid species called paleoliths. Paleoliths, as again, we are talking about the pale face Euro- European nations of the, of the world. <clears throat> the lack of knowledge about these biogenetic truths has been and is now extinct among the expressed suppress natural people of the planet. Because knowledge has also caused much of the world's anti-social behavior and inner social human race problems as we have today. This very day. While we have in all these uh, 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 demonstrations for today to get rights to be treated as spiritual natural beings but you cannot go to the world or to the civilized world and call yourself black or African American or people of color, and then <clears throat> uh, when you turn them, when they t- turn you down, then you want to call them racism. It's not racism. It's nationality and birthright. All you have to do is get on board with the rest of the human family. That's what they expect from you. And that's what they expect from us as a people to get on board, on back on board, and uh, be a part of the human family and take the affairs of men. Let me go on. <clears throat> Civilization, destruction, and social disorder tends to be misunderstood and misclassified, partly because people are not aware of the Europeans' origin and about his inquisition and anti-social agenda. They don't know. They don't know about his inquisition and his anti-social agenda. It goes all the way back to the Roman Inquisition, the Spanish Inquisition, the Pope Philip II. That's what it goes back to. 
And this is what we're dealing with today. As I said before and before, and I say it again. Okay? Here we go. This intersocial anomaly includes distorting the proper names of persons, place, things, and ideas. You know what I'm talking about? I already explained that. That's what happened to us. Okay? Let me go on. As this ancient anthropology history is revealed and reintroduced back to the original natural peoples, there are blind beliefs and misconcepts about history, philosophy, religion, geography, anthropology, gramification, and sociology, etc., on a massive scale, will definitely change forever. Okay? <clears throat> Here we have disease and rejection. Diseases and rejection. A variable period of inter, inter, inter socialization between the natural peoples with the humanoid logical brought about curiosity, some intermixing, and many other instances, out and out and out fighting and rejection of the trilodites, interfacing among the natural people under the less control environmental conditions, produce on a on <clears throat> produce an unexpected state of affairs and a series of unforeseen consequences, among other identified consequences, etc., was that of wars. Skip this part. I have time to read all this. We'll be reading this all. I'll be reading this all to all night to you. Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> The abandonment of old Amexan laboratories and cities and dire state of emergency arose in central Amexan, Africa, due to the unforeseen consequences stemming from the Abrida, Abrida Oriental Disease epidemics and other associated problems. Something drastic has to be done, and quickly. Many of the surrounding people were distraught and demanded that all Abrida experiments be abandoned and that the science scientific laboratory complexes and universities be destroyed. Um, others, one of the heads of the scientists who were mostly directly involved with the Albo Abrida strain aspects of the bio-organic experiments, riots abounded. Many of the Abrida people killed or injured humans and others were killed by some of the frightened and confused mobs who saw the Abrida as a pale, grotesque monster of horror and disgust in a place where peace was common, misery, intolerance, and killings followed the air. The local regencies were forced to close the ancient laboratories and scientific complexes. The news quickly, even many of the ancient pyramid temples and universities of higher learning were ransacked. In a word, the peace of society was totally disrupted by the introduction of these strange, pale humanoids. Another problem was that many uh, breeders would not bathe. And that's true. Uh, even through the history, the European history, as you uh, you hear them talk about uh, Queen Elizabeth I, and a lot of people thought that the reason why you see old movies of those, or if you, if you, if you ever watch them, uh, even stage plays that they have of uh, Elizabeth I of England, the, the reason why a lot of the men would stand so far off of her because of the odor. And she was, it, was, uh, it was rumored that she only bathed twice a year. Because when she taught, her dental uh, hygiene was so bad and that she, uh, she was spit time she speak. That's where a lot of her loyal subjects would stand far, 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 far off of her. Would never be, would never be up on her. It's not because of her royalty or anything like that. That was the reason. Okay, a lot of them. Uh, uh, you see a lot of the uh, old movies of castles and things like that. They didn't ever have any real floors in those castles because both, most of them. Uh, uh, were built on dirt. The floors are mostly dirt, and then they were paved. And with the Moors, as our people that brought civilization to them, 
perfume, uh, uh, a lot of the street lights, the street camp dumps uh, had perfume in them, and they were spread mild and pleasant uh, odor among the bad odor, odor among the people in Europe while they were walking on all fours. We had to teach them how to walk upright on twos. Okay, let me get. Okay, let me get back to the book. Other scientists from Northwest of Mexico, Africa, were also critical of the Negro aspects of ovum and blood crossing with human. Negroes were ex- exported far and wide. This certainly did not ab- abode, did not bode well for the Yucatan scientists of the Mid Islands. Their quest to calm the people and be allowed time to research and address the unforeseen disease epidemic, etc., fell on deaf ears. With the ancient laboratory complexes sacked, destroyed, or burned, the paleolithic issue became the scourge of the Yucatan and uh, Mexico. Mexico. Many cities were out and out, shut down, abandoned, left to rot and decay or as nature will have it among many, even for even the mention of the ancient ancient experiment was taboo. Other aboriginals who had cohabited with the Negro, meaning so called white people, okay, because they, they, they had changed the name. Uh, uh, let me explain to you about they had changed the name because really black. If you look at the origin of black, actually it means go back to pale or white skin, as they were so-called say. They were talking about them. The Negro was them. Actually, niggers were them. They had just switched the titles around. To tell you, that was part of a, of a birthright theft that happened to us. And the reason why, again, we go on through what we're going through today. Okay, let me go on. <clears throat> okay. And, it, and, it, and so it can to be that almost nobody will accept or openly be seen with the Negroes. Others will mock the, the Albo hybrids, calling them names like pale face and red dogs, etc., now, this backs up what I was saying, red dogs, because they were called red at one time, at a time point in history. Okay? Let me go on. On the other hand, others were far more sympathetic, having created bonds or relationships. After all, all our scientists initiated the experiments and carried them to fruition, made them their Negro problems were and are our problems. In short order, decisions were made to do all that was possible to address the Negroes' skin problem and to cure the diseases. Paleo needed protection from the unforgiven among the natural people, yet to a more serious degree from the equatorial sun, which is appeared to angrily cause lesions and cancers among the paleo people at an alarming rate and more compatible environment was in order. Well, they still have, they still have that problem today because a lot of them cannot deal with a lot of uh, sun or heat. You know, a lot of them get spun, uh, sunburned. Even some of our people get uh, sunburned because of lack of melanin in our skin and being amalgamated with them. And other, other reasons of dealing with a lot of these medications that we shouldn't be taking, drugs and chemicals that we put into our bodies. And it knocks a lot of our uh, uh, melanin out of us. Then therefore, therefore, we don't have no protection against the sun like we should have. You see a lot of us always talking about, ooh, the sun, the sun, and they run, and run to the shade. You know, really, we shouldn't be doing that. We should be absorbing the radius of the sun because we are truly sound people. Okay?
Okay, now, says here, Engoland weather patterns are unpredictable and changeable in the most of the time. The temperatures in that area are more mild than on the main continent. Engoland, that is the, or Angoland, that is the, uh, uh, Albion. Those are the names for England at one time, which is now are called England today. Okay. Here we go. Winters temperatures rarely drop below 30, 32 degrees. Therefore, freezing is uncommon. Summers are generally mild and rarely rise above 90 degrees. Under these conditions, the Albo Pelio would have a better chance of surviving the sun's fury and could evolve to a higher state of civilized culture over time. On these accounts, distance and weather, England was chosen as a compatible place for the Pelio people. Also beneficial to the Albo tribal cause was the British Isles, foggy, wet, and cloudy without conditions. I mean, weather conditions. Uh, foggy, wet, and cloudy weather conditions. This will prove to be a more compatible climatic atmosphere for their sensitive pale or elbow skin. At the same time, while addressing the biological issue, the, trans- the transfer resolve on a limited basis. Some of the inter-socialization problems centered on, on at areas known as today as Chichenitsa. Uxbal, Mayapan, Tiyum, and surrounding areas in cities of, of the Yucatan Peninsula. Similar problems were inflicted upon the natural peoples in the southwest of Mexico, Africa regions of Patagonia, and the surrounding lands. The destructive diseases, epidemics, and the social disorder need to be checked in a timely, reasonable order. The hidden and suppressed history of Central and Southwest Amexum, Africa, America, involving the heterogeneous hybrid experiment were decreed taboo, and the Yucatan legacy became a secret sorrow. The issuing of IBO paleo problem have caused humanity untold miseries, being the root of the ancient traditions of the rejection, segregation, and hatred of the Trilodite nigger polyolith problem that the traditional advent of questionable cost customs that we suffer from in these days with the practice of rejecting Negroes and denying Negroes more intricate authority of powers in society due to future inquisition conquests the roles of the true Moabite Moorish sovereigns and that of their self-created hybrids have been reversed as time passed the once sovereign Moabite Moors were colorably branded as Negro niggers and the real paleo Negroes in rebellion took on for themselves the high social case title of white people. White relates to in terms of jury purpose and law as so- sovereign power status over the land. That's what they choose the word white or that's why Europeans choose that word. As I repeat, right rela- relates in terms of jurisprudence and law as a sovereign power status over the land. That's why they chose that, uh, giving themselves a status now and and giving us the negative status as part of our birthright theft. Okay. Exodus to England. The more I gathered up as many blonde-haired, blue-eyed, elbow, paleo, ibrida, as they could really find and place under quarantine in mass, the authorities simply proceeded to transfer the album across the great Atlantis to the land of Angles. The land of Angles today is known as the British Isles. England and England, many savage Negroes were, were killed at Piedras Negras. And so England, and more specifically Europe, became the assigned home land for the Ibrida, who originated by way of Zygot crossbreeding. The original people of that area of the planet moved for the most part back to more sensual areas, and such as to marry, which we know as Africa, which is now inaccurately called Africa, and to Amexum, 
North, Central, and South Americas, including the adjoining islands, Americas. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, let me move on here. Okay. Here we go back to identity and identification. Identity is the quality of or state of being shown to be or prove be identical. The sameness which is materially or element or uh, elementally of the same substance or origin. In law, identity is evidence and proof that that a person, subject, thing, or idea, etc., is exactly and absolutely the same as he, she, or it is claimed to represent, present it, or charged to be. That's why the nationality and birthright identity is so important to us. That's what I just read to you just now. Okay? Identification. Process of showing to be the same as presented, charged, or claimed. And psychoanalysis. The identification is the mental act of or process, usually subconscious, of identifying oneself with an object, a person, a family, member, or a nation, etc. See it? <clears throat> so a proper name. Establish one status in society. What is your name? What is your nationality? What is your nation, uh, nation geographically look located? Okay, it's called a nom de guerre. Name applied to natural person, which is supposed to be natural people, not not artificial persons. We are natural persons, but as long as you keep on calling yourself a black, African American, people of color, colored Negro, and and all these other other names and brands. And you'll you uh, or you'll be considered a artificial person, or you can say a straw man, a straw person. Okay, let me go right here. A nom de guerre name applied to natural person, as in a other other culture that glues to slavery, is called a straw man. A straw man is a figure of a man made of straw, hence a puppet, puppet, a fraudulent surety or a, a perjured witness. The understanding of the possessive mature of names is why the Paleo-European slave-holding families put their names on defeated and enslaved Moors, which I explained to you early, earlier. This was done by the colonization of Europeans for legal surety purposes to protect their family investments in human shadow, which is us, and to establish power of attorney, of attorney over all that the subject or straw man might ever possess, buy, sell, or trade. What did I say to you earlier in the lecture? Anything you buy, sell, or trade does not belong to you, or even your children, because your children also bear the name of your slave master names. Therefore, they are property. You property. Your children are property. And their children's children are property. And they keep it going on and on and on. I said the beat goes on, and the beat goes on in every generation. And you're constantly, constantly, constantly making money for for your property owners, the ones that own you. They own your blood. They, they own all your generations of your own family because you keep bearing the names and labels of those slave families. Let me go on. Okay. Of all the subjects a straw man might ever possess, buy, sell, or trade, thus the corporate colonies states deal with tagged or branded persons under what is legally known as wardship tenures and use the straw man name as in all capitals. You ever wonder why your bills, electric bill, gas bills, uh, any bill, any bill, your name be in all capital letters? Actually, they mean. Actually, they're telling you you did already. 
You don't believe me? Go to any cemetery and look at the headstones. And you see that all a deceased person's names are all in capital letters because that is the law. And this is why you were the strong man, because the strong man is not a real living being or a living flesh and blood person. So time is running out. I wish I had more time to talk to you. If you have any questions, just call Dr. Aileen Bay, L. Bay, 9110-364-9099. I'll call Professor Fahim Richard Eel, area code 314-644-4425. Dr. Eileen is a master Reiki healer and astrologer. If uh, those of you need healing, give him a call. Or give me a call if you have any questions to ask. Peace and love to all of you and the human family of the world. Peace, love, and honor.